Today we are looking at the top 10 places to live near Detroit and we're actually going to dive into the map. So I do this a lot with my clients. We take a look at the map and we look at sort of like what fits their lifestyle and everything like that. So this is going to be the top 10 places to live near Detroit as described by Niche. We're going to go through them 10 to 1. I don't necessarily agree. You'll hear me talk about each one of these cities for their rankings. I might, you know, not necessarily agree with the number one place, uh, but whatever. So that's for you to decide. You might love it. I just don't know who to trust anymore, you know? So what we'll do is we're going to hop into the map here right away. So we have Detroit here, as you can see. If you're not familiar with the area, we do have Canada. Canada is really close, and that is not one of the top 10 places to live near Detroit, although like people love it. So uh, so if you wanted to live in Windsor, that'd be an easy shot, um, and they're building another bridge, so you'd have another way to get there. So right now we have two bridges. So number 10 on the list is Royal Oak, Michigan. So you can see here, if we're, if we're looking on a map, you have sort of a straight shot into the city of Detroit. It's just a few miles away from Detroit and it's located along, we call it the Woodward Corridor. So there's all these cities along the Woodward Corridor and you can see some of the other ones here. You don't know where they are in that list yet. So if we break it down, what I really like about Royal Oak is the downtown. And I talk a lot on my videos about downtowns and how much I love them. A lot of times these areas were developed like starting out from your, your city center. So like your Detroit's and your other big cities and you're, you know, they develop as people move out. Um, and then you have these little clumps and I love them. You know, if you go to downtown Oak, it's super walkable. So you do have some pretty busy roads around here, but there's a lot of areas where it's not super busy and you can walk around. We'll love that. There's a movie theater. It's right here on the other side of this building right here. So you've got a movie theater here. Um, you have a lot of high rise uh, condo buildings. First two hours free parking in the garages. What the hell pays for parking? There is a lot of parking here, which I do really, really like. If we go um, show you some of the neighborhoods near here. When they developed these types of neighborhoods, uh, it's they're usually developed like in the 20s and times like that. So your housing, we have, I'm sure we can we can find something for you. You do have a lot of parks too, which is great. Houses here, you'll almost always see some older construction mixed in with newer construction. So a lot of times they will knock down these houses and you'll see new builds. So like right here, so you've got like a newer build uh, mixed in with some older construction. So you, we have a lot of that that goes on in areas like Royal Oak, and it's more affordable than some of the other cities like Birmingham, um, but it's really nice. So you have these old mature trees because you have these older homes or the older structures. Some of the houses are built on older foundations and they're newer homes, and then sometimes they're completely new builds. And those are, those are things that we'll all, you know, we would address, we would talk about these things uh, if you were looking for a house with me. But people like this when they want to be sort of near Detroit, but not like super close. Uh, they don't want to have the super high taxes and things like that. And they still want to have the, you know, walkable tree lined streets and things like that. But some of the older homes are absolutely beautiful. I mean, like, like look at this place. Um, it, it's gorgeous. And you, we have a lot of places that are like that and a lot of brand new construction. So you will see a lot of that. And then people just like being close to the downtown area. So being able to like walk to that downtown and then being able to like jump right on and take a straight shot to the city of Detroit. A lot of doctors really like to live here. So Ferndale, Royal Oak, areas like that. So uh, Ferndale, you can see here. So Ferndale is going to be slightly closer to Detroit and it's not in the top 10 list. So that's not in the list at all or in their top 10 list. Uh, but Ferndale is right here. So you have Royal Oak here, Ferndale's right here, and then we sort of go into the city of Detroit. So uh, prices go down a little bit as you get closer to Detroit, and then you go to like downtown Detroit and prices go wild. Uh, so prices get really expensive because there's a lot of really nice neighborhoods there, especially recently, like things are just getting wild. Brow's gone wild over here. I would say if you're considering this, you places like Madison Heights and Berkeley are all places that should be on your radar, absolutely. The number nine place on their list is Novi, Michigan. And Novi is a little further out, so it's it's more of the legit like suburbs, suburbs. 
but you can take the freeway, so you just hop right on here and you can take it into, let's zoom me out a little bit so you can sort of see. It's only about a 30 minute drive. It seems like it's further, like when you look at this, but traffic is not crazy here. So when you're looking at a city like Novi, the the commute time is not going to be much if you have to get anywhere like downtown Detroit or you have to get to the airport because from here, and so here we are in Novi, the airport is just down here a little bit. So it's like right in this area. So you just hop on the freeway and you go down there or you just go all the way out to the city of Detroit. So a lot of the automotive workers, the people who work for GM, Ford, they like the Novi area. A lot of the executives live there hop right on the freeway and go. Or if people like, if they work in Ann Arbor, it's another good spot, like if you um, if you wanna live in Novi. So Novi, it, it's sort of funky. They have this like artificial downtown zone that they created, it's not really a downtown. I am a big fan of downtown areas, but there is a lot to do. Um, so it's more industrialized. So there's more like, there's a, a giant movie theater and there's the, the big shopping mall that's in here. So the shopping mall is, let me show you here. So the shopping mall, let's get rid of that street view, is right here. So this is 12 Oaks Mall. It's massive. Um, that's like the mall for the area. And then there's a bunch of shopping around here too. So let me see if I can show you here. So this is 12 Oaks Mall. So it's behind the Red Lobster. Red Lobster. Mm. Fancy fish. Is it fancy though? No, it's not fancy. But around here, you have shopping sort of on both sides. You have, you know, big, I don't know, it's like five lane, six lane road. Um, so you have shopping on both sides. Anything you could possibly ever want is in this area. So a lot of people really, really, really like it. So you have a lot of newer construction. So there's a lot of development that happened in like the 80s, 2000s. With these neighborhoods, it gets a little dicey. So some of the neighborhoods are in the Wald Lake School District, some are in the Novi School District. So the Wald Lake School District is going to give you a little bit of a tax break. So if you're there, you can save a little bit of money. Um, let me show you here. You're going to have a lot of neighborhoods like this. So this is like a, it's a perfect example of a Novi neighborhood. So if you're looking for something like this with some tree-lined streets, probably developed in the mid 90s. And the the prices here, they usually, they average in like the 400,000s. So they, not necessarily in this neighborhood. So like 400,000 plus, so there's a lot of like million dollar houses in Novi too. So you have a lot of gated communities and things like that. And people love them because of the schools, because the schools are con like constantly ranked really, really high um, in Novi. So. If schools are important, you know, if you're looking at school lists and top 10 lists of schools, um, it'll probably come up a bit. So this is Wald Lake right here. Part of that is in Novi. So there are some lakefront homes. So you could potentially have a lakefront property in Novi, but you know, we don't see that very often, but you know, what's next? So this was kind of a surprise to me. So they included Ann Arbor in the top 10 places to live near Detroit. And it's a bit odd because if you look, it is far. So it's it's far when we're talking about Detroit. Hugely popular area. So a lot of people contact me about Ann Arbor and moving to Ann Arbor, but it's not close. So it's not, it's not what I think of when I think of a Detroit suburb. Now, obviously, uh, the big draw or one of the big draws to Ann Arbor is the school. So you have the University of Michigan uh, it's in Ann Arbor. So you have a lot of people moving here from all over because of that. The prices in Ann Arbor, they're they're right around 500,000. So that's usually right around the average for like a, a decent house in Ann Arbor. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at the 3D view here. We'll zoom in a little bit for you so you get an idea of things. They do have Target and Costco, like that. that's always the, the big thing. And then you've got the big house, Michigan Stadium. So it's right here, so it's huge, but it's not like located right in uh, downtown. But if we're looking downtown zone here, it's more of a big downtown. 
so it's not, you know, when you're looking at areas like Royal Oak and Ferndale and Birmingham and even Farmington and places like that, they're more of a, they're more of a small town, like mid small town vibe where this is much more of a, um, like a large scale downtown, you know, it's, it's pretty far away from everything else. When you're in areas like Birmingham or, or uh, Royal Oak, you can go to downtown Detroit fairly quickly, fairly easily, where this, uh, not so much because I mean, you're not super close. It's still not too far away. You know, we are, we're not talking about like hours, you know, a few hours to get anywhere, but it, it has more of a, a big town, downtown vibe. So if that's something you're looking for, then uh, then it might be the spot for you and reach out. You know, again, like all of these areas, we help people all the time. Like this is this is what I do is help people move to areas. And so what we usually do is you give me your budget and sort of what you need to be around. And there's a lot of cities outside of these, this top 10 list um, that that are sort of like lost in the shuffle that are great, you know, that are places that might just be like a few feet away from a town and you might have the same schools um, and you can save a bunch of money, but they never make it onto these lists. So those are the things that like I try to help people sort of figure out where those are at. So if you wanted to live close to downtown Ann Arbor, uh, just to go, sort of get a sense of what those houses look like, it's a lot like this. So in it, this is going to look a lot like the, the places that are really close to downtown Detroit and a lot of the other downtown areas. You have a lot of these stick frame houses where you have siding and sticks and I say sticks, but it's it's two by fours. You know, it's uh, a lot of tree lined streets, uh, older trees and sidewalks. The sidewalks are a really big deal to me, but you're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of college kids who are living in some of these houses. And it's just it goes with the territory. You know, like if, if you're going to live next to a college, like you are going to have college students living near you. Did you say you're partying with college students? Now there are a lot of big estates uh, that are in the Ann Arbor area. Now when we look into like the green zone here, that's where you find uh, some of the bigger homes. Let me get rid of this for you. Now if you're willing to go further out, then there's a good mix. So you can you can go into these older communities where you have these mid-century modern homes, um, a good mix of houses. A lot of times they don't have sidewalks. So I don't know if you're a fan of that. Like if you have kids and you want to walk your dogs, some people are fine with walking in the streets. Some people don't like it at all. Uh, like I moved to an area personally um, and we do not have sidewalks now. And it's something that I didn't really think about it at the time, but it, it makes a big difference. So when you have a, you know, sidewalk streets and walkability to a downtown, I like that a lot. So uh, these neighborhoods are gorgeous. I mean, like if, having the nicest lawn in a neighborhood is your thing then an area like this would be great for you uh, and there's a lot of areas like this in michigan so just in general yeah, great job on the lawn farmington michigan okay so this is i would say it's probably one of the most underrated areas around so if you look here it's short, sort of shaped like, like like a taser gun or something it's not very big and the, the whole downtown area is going through a whole redevelopment right now. So they're adding in a bunch of uh, coffee shops, lots of coffee shops, juice bars. You have a pavilion here where there's a ton of events where they block things off. Let's fly down here. And I tell a lot of people that if you can buy a house right now near downtown Farmington, you absolutely should. Uh, because I feel like the prices are just going to continually just skyrocket because I feel like it's one of the lowest priced uh, areas to sort of snag a house in a great area like this, it's sort of centrally located. So if we look at it, when we when we do an expanded view, you'll be able to see sort of where it is on the map and how close it is to everything, really. So you do have a Starbucks, but there's, there's a, um, a bunch of like craft coffee roasters that are coming in. So you have this downtown area here. Um, trees blocking all of it okay so you have this pavilion here and they'll have they'll have concerts here and events here and that's like sort of the hub and then we go down here there's a bunch of restaurants and there's breweries and it's just a nice downtown it, it doesn't stay open very late uh, so that's one thing. So a lot of the downtown areas you have a lot of like younger like younger people that are wanting to like go out to the bar all night. Like this isn't the, the spot for that at all. 
uh, like Royal Oak would be much better for that. So if you're looking for, if you want to stay at a bar until two o'clock in the morning. Let's rage! Royal Oak, like that's the spot, or Ferndale, but not Farmington. So Farmington is just an entirely different vibe. Uh, you can see here in this photo, um, they're doing, it, it looks like a dirt road here. It's not a dirt road. They were doing a whole bunch of redevelopment. So for a long time, this was a four lane street going down Farmington Road right here, which is the main drag into Farmington or downtown Farmington. And what they did was they redeveloped the whole thing. So they made it into a two lane and then they put patio seating out for all of the for all of the restaurants and things. So it's more of a, they're like reclaiming the walkability for the downtown. They, I guess they just didn't like how much it was growing or how, you know, people were just running through there too fast. So it's been great. So that opened up uh, about a year ago and it's wonderful. Now, if we look at the neighborhoods around here, it's going to be similar to a lot of these other areas with downtowns. You have the uh, the tree-lined streets, you have the sidewalks, the little houses, but again, the prices are lower because I, I feel like it's an area that like just people forget about that it's even here, even though it is on this top 10 list and it did make it to what, number seven. Uh, so an av the average price of a house uh, around downtown Farmington or in Farmington is in the 400, so it's in that 400 range. But you can, if you wanted to be in a bigger style home, you can move to, so Farmington's sort of a funky shape. So like this area right here, this is all Farmington Hills, but it's right outside of those, um, the, the border or the boundary for Farmington. So when we look here, this neighborhood here is super popular for people who wanna live near Farmington. This is called Independence Commons. And what people like about it is the commons area. So it, you can see here that there's all of this green space that like ties in between all of these homes where kids can go out and play and you have these tennis courts and these playgrounds and all of these are all pathways. So instead of having sidewalks in the front of the homes, they all have pathways behind. So your kids can like go and ride their bikes or rollerblade. Does anybody rollerblade anymore? Rollerblading. It's back, people. Or like my kid, skateboards. So he goes over here and he skateboards through the commons areas because it's all nice and smooth. So this is a, a hugely popular area for people who want to be able to just walk to downtown Farmington, but you're in Farmington Hills. So that's it's one of those things I like to talk to people about. Like, what are your goals? Like, where do you want to be around? Um, and then there's also places like this, like Heritage Park. So this is a little over 200 acres of just woodland. So there's all these hiking paths that go through these woods. Uh, and this is what it looks like here. So you can, in the fall, apparently. So there's pathways here that you can, you can take through. And there's also a splash pad here and it's all free. So like people can just pop by anytime, but people like that because it's really close to Farmington. Let me see here. So what is the next one? on the? And I should say that a lot of people like to move here when they're moving from like Livonia or anywhere like that. So Livonia is just under Farmington. So Livonia, the city of Livonia, it's huge. It's one of the biggest cities. All of this area is all Livonia. Even though it's not being tagged by Google as Livonia, it's huge. It's big, doesn't have a downtown. Uh, but it's a, a really popular area for people who are moving here and they want to buy like a you know their first home because the area Livonia was developed mainly in the in the 50s I think it was founded in the 50s too um, it's right off of 96 so people who are coming in from Detroit so again you know if we take this over there's Detroit they hop on the freeway it's about a 20 minute drive to Livonia and they can buy a three bed two bath brick ranch with a basement and a two car garage like that that is Livonia. So a lot of times people will buy their first house there and then they move up to an area like Farmington or Farmington Hills because it's like right on top of it and it's just they have bigger houses. So let's see, next on the list is Gross Point Park. It's totally different avenue. So we're going in a totally different direction, but that is the next one on their list. So the average price of a house here is about 420, like in the 400s, but they get really expensive because you have Gross Point, Gross Point Park, Gross Point Shores, Gross Point Farms. There's a lot of grosses. It's gross. It is gross. <laughs> I talk about them a lot in a lot of my other videos. 
and they're they're all pretty similar. Uh, the the look, the vibe of all of the the streets and everything is all going to be. And I'll show you here. They're they're close to Detroit. You know, like old school, old town Detroit. So look how much blue we have. Look how many streets we have to pick from. So let's just pick one at random. So you're going to have, look, it's a little ranches and things. So you have a lot of these starter type homes. And then we have, let's see, homes like this. So you're going to have a lot of places like this, which are, again, they're beautiful. So you have, looks like these, these families have replanted some trees, but a lot of times you'll have the old, so down here we have some older homes or older growth. But you have a lot of houses like this, so it's not uncommon to find old architecture like this where you you still have a, a decent size yard. A lot of them are fenced. Uh, you have the the bigger garages and it it reminds me a lot of Detroit. If you're not familiar with Detroit, you know, I know Detroit gets a pretty bad rap, um, but some of the nicest neighborhoods in the state are in Detroit. You just have nowhere to look but you have a lot of neighborhoods like this so this is this is like the quintessential like this is what this area looks like you know if you're driving down the streets you're going to find a lot of homes like this so if this is sort of what you're looking for um depending on your budget and like where you want to be something like this might be great uh, and again it's really close to detroit so your your distance from your distance to detroit uh it's not far at all like it's it's like a couple miles, let me see. So you're here and Detroit is like here. So it's like a straight shot. It's basically Detroit, you're close to the water. That's the other thing. So I, I don't know how I forgot to say that. So a lot of people really like it because they want to be close to the water. So you do have the Detroit River um, is right here. It's like an ocean, right? So that's Lake St. Clair right there. So it, it borders right along Lake St. Clair. And I should probably say that some of the nicest estates that you will find are going to be right along the water. Let's see if I can show you. You can't really see the fronts, but oh yeah, they're, they're blocking us off, but they're beautiful. Like it's, it's houses like that. So if you are looking for a multi-million dollar mansion on the water, um, this will probably be your zone because you can't really find anything like that, you know, anywhere else. So you're going to have a lot of that all the way up and down. So all of the grosses will have homes like this up and down the water. All right. So the next place on our list, if we are shooting up is Bloomfield Township. So I actually made a video all about Bloomfield Township versus Bloomfield Hills and just the differences between the two, because when you look at it, so Bloomfield Hills is this little pocket right here. So you have uh, Bloomfield Hills and then Bloomfield Township sort of encompasses it. So at least you just combine the two is what I say. You're going to have bigger lots. You're going to have uh, pretty expensive real estate. So what do I have here? So, well, they say 400,000 plus, but it, it gets pretty pricey. But usually what happens is when people are looking in areas like Birmingham and if they want more land, if they want uh, bigger lots and things like that, then we end up looking in areas like Bloomfield Hills, Bloomfield Township, because you have all that. You can see here that there is a lot of green space, have a lot of cul-de-sacs too. So I know for me, like I love cul-de-sacs. So if you can be like at the back of a cul-de-sac and you don't have any neighbors behind you, that's like the dream situation. So like this guy right here, let's, let's take a look at this house here. So again, like these are, this is the perfect example of what the houses look like here. So they're probably going to be built in the 70s, 80s, you know, developed sort of after areas like Birmingham and places with the, the smaller downtowns, but at like amazing neighborhoods, amazing, amazing neighborhoods. So a lot of people here, they move here for the space and the schools. You're gonna have a lot of blacktop streets instead of cement, uh, but that's just sort of comes with the territory. You don't have a downtown per se, uh, but it's okay. Like I'll forgive them because they are really close to areas like Birmingham and you have like the Cranbrook uh, Institute of Science and the Cranbrook Art Museum all right here. And you do have the library here too. So you have access to like a lot of stuff and there are a lot of golf courses around as you can see. There are, let me 
Let's see if I can show you here and zoom out a little bit. Now you'll see that you've got a bunch of these smaller lakes in here. And then over here you have even more. So like these areas over here are not on the top 10 list, but if you are looking for like a nice like lake home in Metro Detroit, you're probably going to be looking around here. Um, this is where Bob Seeger lives in this area here. If you've watched my video about where celebrities live in Michigan, because it's beautiful. I mean, you're, you're sort of, you're close to everything and you have a lake. So it's like double bonus, right? Uh, so you, you do have some smaller lakes in here. They're not as large as this or like Cass Lake, but there, there are some lakes. So you, you could, you could find a lake and you are sort of close to all of these other areas here again. So you've got the hospitals and everything again, you know, when I talked about Royal Oak, you have Royal Oak Beaumont, great hospital. A lot of people just take it right down there. Next up on the list, Birmingham, Michigan. So I talk a lot about Birmingham. I'm a huge fan of Birmingham. I have a lot of people um, moving here from California, DC, sort of all over the place. And Birmingham seems to be a favorite of a lot of people. And I think there's a bunch of different reasons for that, but it, a lot of it is the, the style of homes, the quality of the builds, uh, everything from new construction to the older construction, the things that have been remodeled. It is one of the more expensive areas to live in Michigan. But it has to be your thing. Unless you have a huge budget and you're you're able to pay for a big home on a big lot in Birmingham, they're, they're not super common. They're there, north of a million, for sure. Like if you're going to buy a big house on a big lot, way over a million dollars. But a million is usually, a uh, million to two million uh, is the budget usually that people are looking for, what they're using when they're looking in the Birmingham area. Amazing downtown super walkable there's little alleys and things that you can cut through and I, can, I can show you here and i think that is one of the main reasons that people like it so it's not like a eight lane street ripping through the middle of downtown it's extremely walkable so i mean you do see quite a bit of traffic here but it's great. So like the, the, the number of restaurants and things that you can just walk to, especially if you live really close to downtown is great. So that's a lot of times the people that I help, they're looking for places that they can live uh, fairly close. Um, you know, I always joke around when people say, is it walkable? I'm like, well, anything's walkable, right? Like 30 miles can be walkable to someone. Longest walk of shame ever. We have all of these parks everywhere. They, they, the city is just amazing. So let's see here. I'll show you some of the neighborhoods real quick. You've got Corton Lake right here. I have Corton Lake Estates that's right here. Um, some of these houses are just amazing. So again, uh, like a lot of the other areas, you're going to have older construction mixed in with newer construction. A lot of the houses were knocked down to make way for these, you know, giant monster homes. Um, but that's all right. Like, you know, you have a lot of sidewalks. Let me show you some of the other ones here. Now there is a less expensive area to live in Birmingham, if you'd like to. Now, if we're looking at it like this, and we're looking at the city borders, Typically, it, things have started to change a little bit, but typically the houses that are on this side of Woodward, so this will be Woodward. So Woodward is the road, if you can see my mouse pointer there, uh, Woodward is the road that runs straight into the city of Detroit. And these homes are traditionally more expensive. So you have higher property values over here um, and slightly lower property values over here. You can see that it looks like they're um, a little, third here on this side it's still really nice right so this is where tim allen lived so tim allen tool man tim allen i'm buzz lightyear he lived in birmingham so he grew up here so it's beautiful um one of my favorite cities in the state of michigan so definitely again like sidewalks, tree-lined streets, manicured lawn. So it makes sense that it ranks so high. It's not what a lot of people would consider affordable. Uh, now, if we look here, let's take a look. Now this is, it's usually a little more expensive in this zone. You have the golf course right here. So a lot of these, these are 
newer construction. I've done a lot of tours around Birmingham um, and a lot of home tours to show people what, you know, what your money buys, like what you can actually get for the money here. All right, next one on our list is Beverly Hills. All right, 90210. This is like Farmington. So it's one of the one of the areas that sort of gets lost in the shuffle. So like people just sort of forget that it exists. And I have to remind them, um, not remind them, but you know, I have to offer it up as a suggestion because sometimes people say like, I want to live here for sure, no matter what, that's where I want to be. And it doesn't work out. So the the prices in an area like uh, Birmingham will be 700 plus, right? So 700, 800 will be like a starter home there. Where here in Beverly Hills, you can get something closer to the 550 range. And it's again, it's a really, really, really nice area with sort of the like a, a similar vibe. It doesn't have it doesn't have that like downtown zone, but it's not far away. So if we look at it here, if we're looking at it in relation to Birmingham, you could walk there, right? Like, so I just said, when we're talking about walkability, if you lived right here, you would be less than a mile from downtown Birmingham <coughs> or about a mile away. So let's, let's see. So like right here, we're in Beverly Hills. This is sort of the the vibe here. So it's not as like grand, you know, you have a lot of the, the smaller houses. So this is going to look like some of the other areas around a lot of the three bed, two bath brick ranches. But then again, there are a lot of other big houses here. So there's a lot of like really big houses here. So you just have to know where to look. When you have more of a, of, of a mix of construction in an area, that's where there's much more of a selection. When you have an area like Beverly Hills, it's larger, uh, you have more homes over time, and you can see here it's more developed here, uh, and then you have more green space here. So you have a mix of like condos, and then let me show you here. So these houses would have been Probably in the uh, in the 50s range, like in the 1950s, not a lot of sidewalks, but still, still a nice area, but just, you know, it's not the same. What is next on our list? So this would be number two on the top 10 places to live in Michigan near Detroit, Huntington Woods. Everyone wants to live in Huntington Woods. And I, and I mean that. So the number of people who contact me about moving to Huntington Woods, it's usually um, they'll consider a place like Royal Oak and then they see Huntington Woods and they're like, oh my God, that's beautiful. I want to live there. The problem is usually that there are not very many homes. It's a pretty small area. If we're comparing it to a lot of the other cities, you know, it's pretty small and a huge chunk of it you can see right here is the zoo. So you have the zoo here. This is the Detroit Zoo. So the Detroit Zoo is split between, I'm trying to point with my finger, but you can't see my finger. It's split between Royal Oak. So it's Royal Oak here. That's where the entrance is to the zoo. So you can see right here, that little paw. That is the entrance of the zoo in Royal Oak. And then the majority of the zoo is actually located here within Huntington Woods. So you have a, a good chunk of the city is the zoo. And then when we look over here, we have a golf course. So you have a golf course and a zoo taking up a big chunk of the land. I hope, I really hope they never develop that. I hope not the zoo, the zoo should stay there forever. But I hope that they never develop the, um, the golf course because that would be a shame if they did something like that. Now, if we, Look at the housing. Let's go. So you've got a lot of houses like this. Developed earlier, there are a lot of sidewalk streets. It's close to the zoo. It's close to the golf course. It's close to Birmingham. It's close to sort of everything, but houses don't come up for sale very often. Let me look, let me find you another neighborhood in here. So this is another one where I would say, if something comes up, be prepared to be competitive for it because people will fight for these places. So over here, you're gonna have newer developments in the city, and then you should have some of the older stuff. So this is going to be more of like a Gross Point vibe, Royal Oak vibe. Again, 
sidewalk streets, manicured lawns, everyone takes care of their stuff. A lot of pride and ownership here. And the pricing, it's deceptive because they say that it's like in the 400 range, but a lot of places go for a lot more than that. And it's, it's highly competitive to get them. So the number one place to live near Detroit, Michigan is Troy. So Troy, Michigan takes the top spot. They have a lot of great things going for it. So it is a really big city. The schools come out ahead a lot on the top 10 lists. Like you know, everybody seems to love the schools and the area. The location is pretty much ideal. You know, it's not too far away from the city of Detroit. It's close to sort of all things. And one of the big, big things is how big it is. So that's the big thing is how big it is. And because it's so big and so developed, you have just a ton of houses and a ton of availability for homes. So with these smaller areas, it's harder to buy. So you have expensive real estate and not a lot available where here there is always homes available. So it's it's almost like the default. So if someone can't find a house anywhere else, you're like, ah, we'll just look in Troy. Um, no offense, if you live in Troy and you love it, that's great. Um, they don't really have like a downtown area. You you know, it's like, it's like Farmington Hills. So like Farmington Hills, again, like I said, is close to downtown Farmington. You can get right to Farmington, but it doesn't have a downtown of its own. So you don't really have that, but you just have a lot of houses. So let's see here, I'll show you. It's like a sea of blue. So these are all the streets. So we've got Troy High School is right here. So Troy High is super popular. A lot of people want to live near Troy High. Um, so if you if you were to live near Troy High, this is sort of what you can expect. So you have a lot of homes like this. So it's gonna be really similar to an area like Novi or Northville with construction. So you have a lot of sidewalk streets. Uh, not a lot of fences. So that is going to be a, a big drawback for a lot of people moving from out of state. Um, and that's like a shocker to them is that you cannot have a fence. Most areas, except for these older, older areas that are closer to downtown, like the areas like Royal Oak, Clawson, Berkeley, the, a lot of the points, like those you can have fences because they're just such old construction. Everyone had fences back then. And then as they started to develop these neighborhoods in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, they decided for some reason in Michigan, like no fences. You have to have an electric fence or whatever. So if you're looking for something like that and you just you just don't care about the downtown, you like the sidewalks and you're okay with not having a fence, then this would be the perfect place for you. But again, you know, if you're interested in any place like this, or an area like this or any of the ones on the top 10 or if you want us to help you or me to help you find the perfect place for you and your budget in Michigan, um, reach out. My contact information is all below. We can schedule a video call and we'll figure out exactly what's right for you. And then we'll go from there. We'll find you the perfect spot. But these are the top 10 according to niche.com. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like these or do you not like those? I would be curious to hear. And if you're still looking for a place to live in Metro Detroit, Michigan, check out some of the other videos and playlists on my channel, and I'll see you there.